The changes to leveling are here and because of that it does open up some new opportunities and new ways to level that you can do while also working towards mounts. So what I want you to do in this video is run through those various new methods that you can take to level and still be getting okay experience towards mounts. Now there are a ton of other mounts you could be doing but those are going to be like grinding mobs and stuff and you're going to be getting a really small amount of experience. So I've tried to pick out the methods where you're still going to be getting a good chunk of experience but obviously it's not going to be efficient as leveling normally. The first method up is going to be island expeditions, and if you don't pick any chromy time in particular, you'll basically just be put into Battle for Azeroth, you'll go through the base stuff, and you'll unlock island expeditions. And you can do these from level 10 all the way up to level 50, and the experience these give isn't too bad either. Obviously not as quick as traditional leveling, but not too far behind either. If you had some level, you know, high level characters boosting you through these as well, obviously they'd go a lot better. But just playing with randoms, you're still going to be getting pretty good experience, and you can have a chance of getting one of those nine random drop island expedition mounts, the Twilight Avenger, the Surf Jelly, the Craghorn Chasm Leaper, Squawks, Kinshu's Eternal Hound, Stonehide Elderhorn, Blood Gorge Hunter, Island Thunder Scale, and the Risen Mare. You'll also be getting doubloons as well, so you'll be able to purchase the Saltwater Seahorse or the Siltwing Albatross. The next method up isn't exactly a new one, but it is definitely worth mentioning if you're looking for something else to do to get mounts while you level, and that is going to be Battlegrounds. As you progress through Battlegrounds, obviously the experience is going to fluctuate a lot depending on whether you're winning or losing, but as you progress and complete Battlegrounds, you'll have a chance of getting Mark of Honors, and you'll be able to turn those in for various mounts. I think there's like 8 or 9 Mark of Honor mounts that you can purchase, so it's worth keeping hold of those, and you can even send them to other characters as well if you've got like 3 on one character, 4 on another. They are bind an account so you can send them all onto one character and purchase yourself some of those Mark of Honor mounts. The next method up is going to be dungeons, and obviously dungeon leveling is nothing new, but with the chromy time stuff you're able to do some dungeons earlier than you would be able to previously. The first thing up is going to be tabards, and you're going to be able to wear a base faction tabard like you could before, be able to throw one of those on and level through dungeons, you'll get your rep up with like Orgrimmar or Thunderbluff or whatever, get yourself to Exalted and then you'll be able to purchase that faction's tabards. Now obviously the best approach would be to just make a class trial and go buy them that way, but if you wanted to get your reps up for whatever reason, then that's definitely one way of going about it. But outside of the base faction reps there are also two other tabards that you could be wearing. The first one is for the Worm Rest Accord, which you'll be able to buy within Dragon Blight in Northrend. You'll go, you'll gain reputation with the the Worm Rest Accord, which you're probably best doing through Burian Tundra. Over on the, I think it's Amber Ledge, there'll be a quest chain there that you can go through, it'll lead you over to Kaldara. And once you're done with all that, you'll have enough reputation to be able to pick, uh, purchase the Tabard, which I think is uh, like friendly. Once you've got that on, you can start queuing for the various Northrend dungeons, and you'll get yourself rep as you go through them. Now you could target a specific dungeon, but it's probably worth doing random. Although do keep in mind though, for this kind of stuff, you will need to set your chromie time to Wrath of the Lich King, otherwise you won't have those Wrath dungeons in your selection. If you're looking for a different tabard to wear for different mounts, then you could be doing the Ramka Hen rep, which will get you the two different riding camels. For that though, you will need to set your stuff to Cataclysm, and you will need to level quite far though, because Uldum doesn't unlock until like the 30s. So you'll need to get yourself to about 30, go and do the Uldum stuff, unlock the zone, unlock Ramka Hen, get yourself to friendly by just you know following the quest chain, and then once you're done with that, you'll be able to purchase the Tabad and then start doing the Cataclysm Dungeons, and you'll be gaining yourself rep. You do need to be careful though, because if it does queue you into a classic dungeon, you won't get rep, it's only going to be the Cataclysm Dungeons that will give you rep. And then the final one similar to these is going to be getting exalted with the Scenarian Expedition, which will allow you to purchase the Scenarian War Hippogriff. Now for this one though, you can start doing this at around level 11. Once you've unlocked dungeons, you can start queuing for the Underbog, or any of the kind of uh, Serpent Shrine dungeons, so Underbog, Slave Pens, and Steam Vaults. Any of those three are going to give you reputation towards the Scenarian Expedition, so you want to be making sure you're queuing for those three in particular, and you'll be gaining yourself uh, rep as you go along eventually you will get yourself to Exalted and then you'll be able to purchase yourself that mount. Now the queue times are going to be a little bit longer though because you are queuing for those specific dungeons. And then outside of that we also have the random RNG drop mounts. There's going to be three different dungeons that we could be doing for that. First of all we have uh, the service entrance for Stratholm, 
complete and that will give you a chance at getting the Baron Rivendare's Death Charger and that can be done from level 21 onwards. And then at level 31 you're going to be able to queue for Vortex Pinnacle which the second boss in there will have a chance of giving you the reins of the Drake of the North Wind or you can do Stone Core which will have a chance of giving you the Vitreous Stone Drake also from the second boss and you can just keep running all three of those dungeons or two or whichever one you want in particular keep running it over and over and it's just giving you experience while you're having a chance for those mounts as well. Next up we have daily quests and this is where we can start doing things that we couldn't really do previously but now we can because of the zone scaling higher. And there's a few ways you could approach this. You could put your character in one of the daily quest hubs and log in every day, complete your five or so dailies and log out and you'll be getting, you know, equal to quest worth of experience. So it'd be like doing five quests every day. Or you could kind of do like a daily world tour and you run around and do all the various dailies and you progress in multiple factions at once. It's really up to you how you want to go about it. But I'll run through the daily quests that you could be doing on that character and then let you decide from there basically. First up we have dailies within TBC and the first one I'm going to talk about is the Neverwing. You'll find these over in Shadow Moon Valor and you'll be able to start this quest chain at level 27 but you are going to need flying so technically you're going to need level 30 for this unless you get help. And you're going to need a little bit of help further into the quest chain anyway, because a, an elite called Zulu Head the Whacked, I think he's called. Very difficult to solo, he pretty much one-shot my level, like, 32 character. But you're going to need help with that. But eventually you will unlock the dailies with the Neverwing, which will allow you to progress towards getting the Neverwing Drakes. The next one is going to be the Shatari Skyguard, and once again you're going to need level 30 for flying for these. And you'll find these within Terrakar Forest, and getting them to Exalted will give you the Never Rays. Problem is, there's only going to be three dailies with these guys, so it isn't the most efficient way of getting the reputation, but it is some extra dailies you could add onto your to-do list if you do want to do that. You'll find two of the dailies over in Terrakar Forest, and the third over in Blade's Edge Mountains. Next up, we have Wrath of the Lich King, and the majority of this stuff is going to need you to be at least level 30. The first one up is going to be the Argent Tournament, and this one's a pretty nice one because you're going to unlock progressively a bunch of dailies you can do in per day, so you're going to have a ton of stuff you can do, and the Agent Tournament isn't the most fun thing to do on a max level character, so doing it on an alt while you're kind of logging in, getting some XP, working towards Agent Tournament, it feels pretty good. There's a ton of mounts to get from this place as well, so definitely worth looking at if you haven't got these already. Next up we have the Hildnir dailies. The problem is there's only going to be about one of these per day for you to do, but completing it will give you a chance at that white polar bear mount. So you want to be comboing this for things like the Agent Tournament, just give yourself something else to do, and give yourself a little bit more experience and to get this started you'll want to head over to k3 and complete the quest called they took our men and follow on from there and if you follow that quest chain further that we were talking about a moment ago you'll eventually unlock the sons of hodir and they'll have two dailies for you to do per day if you get to revered you'll be able to purchase the ice mammoth and at exalted you'll be able to purchase the grand ice mammoth once again not the best way of getting reputation the better way would be relics of ulduar but it is something you can add on to your other daily to-do lists and be progressively working towards this faction. The final Wrath of the Lich King one to talk about is going to be the Oracles, and getting these guys to Revered will allow you to purchase the Mysterious Egg, and after three days that'll hatch and it'll have a small chance of turning into the green Proto Drake mount. To get it started you'll want to head over to Shulzar Basin, and there'll be a mob called Pitch that you can kill, that'll unlock a quest, you'll follow through a fairly long chain, but hey it's given your experience at least, and then eventually you'll be in a cave with a Lich and you'll be able to pick between the Oracles guy and the Puppet Men dude, you want to keep the oracles guy alive and then you'll become aligned with the oracles and you can complete their dailies until you do hit revered. Next up we have Cataclysm and for these you need to be level 32 and above. And the first one we're going to talk about is Tol Barad. You'll find the portal to go there from Orgma or Stormwind. And in your little faction hub you'll have a bunch of dailies for you to do. And then if your faction is control of the PvP area within Tol Barad, I think it's Tol Barad Peninsula or maybe the Tol Barad Peninsula is the main bit, I don't know. Either way, there'll be a PvP section. If your faction is in control, you'll unlock more dailies from there as well. And completing these dailies will give you rep towards your faction. And it'll also give you these uh, commendations as well. And then once you hit Exalted, you'll be able to purchase two mounts. One of them is kind of a split mount, and one is a spectral mount unique to your faction. You could also head over to Mount Hyjal at level 30 and progress through the quest chains there to help all the different guardians within the zone. Once you've done that and you're level 32, which you should be after helping the Guardians anyway, then you'll unlock the ability to kind of unlock the Molten Front stuff. And the Molten Front stuff is going to be a bunch of dailies. And then as you progress through the dailies, you'll be able to pick like a different area that you want to help. And once you've helped all the areas and you've done the various quest chains, you'll unlock the achievement, 
which will give you the Flame Ward Hippogriff. Moving on to Mr. Pandaria next, and you will need to be level 35 and above for this stuff. And the first one up is going to be Order of the Cloud Serpent, which once you reach Exalted, you'll get yourself the Azure, the Jade, and the Golden Cloud Serpent. Now, this isn't the best way of gaining reputation with this faction once again, and some of these dailies give slightly less rep, or sorry, experience than the other dailies we've talked about, but it is something you can add onto your to-do list if you do want to do this. So for this, you'll want to head over to the Jade Forest, and there'll be an area called the Arboretum, and there there'll be a quest chain that will allow you to basically head over to the Windward Isle, and you'll progress through that, you'll pick yourself an egg, and then from there you'll get the dailies that you can do every day. On top of that, there's going to be a bunch of different factions will give you dailies. The first one up is going to be the Golden Lotus, which we'll find within the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. And getting these guys to Exalted will allow you to purchase the various different crane mounts. Also within the Veil, at your faction hub, you'll find the Breadcrumb quest that will take you to aid one of the Celestials. This will give you rep towards the August Celestials, and at the end of it, once you're Exalted, you'll be able to purchase the Thundering August Cloud Serpent. You also have the Calaxi, which we can get the Amber Scorpion from. And to start their stuff, you'll head over to the wall, kind of in between the Veil and Dread Wastes. There'll be a quest chain that will start there and you'll eventually unlock their dailies. You also have the Shadow Pan, which we'll find within Town Long Steps. They'll give you these uh, Riding Tigers, the Siberian Tigers. You also have the Tillers, which we can start in Valley of the Four Winds. And then we'll have the Anglers, which we can do over in Krasarang Wilds. So there's going to be a bunch of different dailies if you to do a full cycle around mop. You can actually get quite a lot of experience from just doing the dailies. But do keep in mind, once again, this isn't the most ideal way of getting the reputation with these factions. But you are going to be leveling a character while you're doing it, so you've got to decide. But wait, there's more dailies in MOP. Actually, a ton more. You could also unlock the kind of faction campaign within Caressaring Wilds. To get this started, you'll head over to the Vale. And outside of your kind of faction hub, there'll be a, a Horde or Alliance NPC there that'll start you on that quest. You'll head over to Crossrang Wild, you'll aid Garrosh or Varian, eventually you'll set up your base and you'll have dailies. And from this you can either get the Wyvern as Horde, or the Griffins as Alliance. And then finally we have the Isle of Thunder, and getting your faction there to Exalted will allow you to purchase your faction's Direhorn. The problem with this place though, is it seemed very inconsistent with the dailies and quests that actually gave experience. Maybe it was bugged, but I feel like that's just something that they're not going to fix even if it is. So do be careful with this, you will still get some experience from the main quest chains and stuff, and there's quite a lot of it, but in terms of dailies it's going to be very hit and miss if you're actually gaining experience from it. So it's up to you if you want to do that stuff, and if you do, head over to the Shadow Pan Garrison and you can get that stuff started there. The final one up is going to be Warlord to Draenor, and for most of this stuff you will need to be level 40, which is pushing it on the high end, but hey I wanted to give you the option either way. And the first thing we want to talk about is the Garrison building the stables. If you slap down a stables in your garrison, then you'll get dailies from this, which will basically make you go and capture a mob, and then the next day to train it. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this, it's been bugged for a while, so I imagine it's still going to be bugged for a while, is if you get your quest to capture the mob, log out, log back in, you'll get the next day's quest to capture the next mob, and you can do that until you've got all of the kind of mobs that you need to capture, and then from there on out, you'll start getting the training quests. Unfortunately for the training quest, you can't log out and log back in for those, but for the capture ones, you definitely can, so do do that and make use of that as well, because you are going to be getting access to more dailies faster. And then the final thing up in Ward is going to be unlocking your Tanan dailies. To do this, you will need a level 3 garrison though. Once you've got your level 3 garrison, you'll have Vol'jin or Varian within your garrison. They'll give you a quest to go to get a ship right. You'll follow that quest chain, unlock your shipyard, and then you'll head over to Tanan and you'll unlock your base there. And then from there, you'll have a bunch of dailies that you can do within that zone that are going to be giving you that rep and that experience as well. And the main mount you're going to get from this is the Death Tusk Felbor, but you will be working towards a few other mounts if you're doing stuff in this zone as well, like the Corrupted Dreadwing and also the Wild Gore Tusk or the Bristling Hellbor as well. So with the dailies out of the way, there are a few more misc things that I want to run through that can be progressing you towards a mount while giving you some kind of experience. The first one up is going to be Archaeologer. And from doing this, you'll have a chance of getting the fossilized raptor if you're digging up fossils within like Eastern Kingdom's calendar or you're trading in the boxes from like Mop or Wad. And then it still gives pretty good experience too. The problem is the dig sites are quite far between each other. So there's a lot of travel between them. But if you want to fly around and do some archaeology, it's one way of gaining some experience. And then you get a chance for the fossilized raptor. And then if you're doing the Tolvir solves, then you'll have a chance of getting the uh, Ultramarine Kuraji battle tank. 
And then if you're an alchemist and you're doing the Tolvir Souls as well, you have a chance of getting the recipe to make the Vial of the Sands, the Sandstone Drake as well. You'll also have the time walking event when that's around. Obviously, most people know about time walking, but I wanted to mention it in the video just so, so someone's not like, oh, you forgot this one. So time walking is obviously generally very good experience. You get a lot of experience from completing the time walking dungeons. And as you do them as well, you will be getting yourself the time warped badges, which you can turn in for various mounts, depending on which current expansion is active for time walking. For example, if Wrath of the Lich King's active, you could get the Ironbound Wraith Charger. Or if Wad's active, you could get the Beast Lord's Iron Tusk or the Beast Lord's War Wolf. Also, from each boss within Time Walking, not just the end boss, every single boss has a chance of dropping the Infinite Time Reaver. This is a very good looking mount. So that's the vast majority of the stuff that's going to give you a, a decent amount of experience for your time. The rest of the stuff I'm going to mention now is a lot more suboptimal, but I thought I'd quickly fire through it as well. So you could also progress through the Sor Soromar story quest chain. If you're level 45, you can pick that up in the Legion Dalaran. And that would give you the Arcanist Mana Saber. You could also do the Garrison Invasions if you're level 40 and above. These are going to be quite hard to get gold and platinum in though if you're just level 40. Because your guards wouldn't have scaled to a higher level yet. Um, so you're going to need to be quite proactive to get the mobs killed. And then you're also going to have the reps within the Legion and BFA zone. So if you were to time walk or sorry, chrome time through those two expansions... You'll be getting to yourself to Exalted with those factions and you can work towards Paragon Caches quicker. Or for the BFA zones, you'll be closer to Exalted, especially with the rep bo bonus active right now. And um, you'll be able to purchase the two mounts from the various different factions in BFA zones too. And then everything else, I, I imagine some people are going to say, why don't you mention like the Tal books? There's not really dailies for those and the other alternative is just to mob grind, which is really, really low experience. It's obviously much more efficient to do that once you over level it. You're just going to get such a, a minimal amount of experience from farming those mobs anyway. It's not really worth mentioning, but hey, you've got that. The Venomide and the Winter Spring dailies don't actually give uh, experience from what I could tell. And then you have things like the Golden Heavily Cloud Serpent. That only gives one daily though, and it's quite far out of the way. But that's over in the Timeless Isle, and your main way of getting rep with that is going to be from mob grinding once again. But, you know, things are worth mentioning. But the vast majority of the things we talked about earlier are going to be your main ways of kind of gaining experience. While you work towards mounts too. And for the people who made it this far into the video, I wanted to talk about something real quick, which is my mount website. I've been working on this for a few months now. It's not finished yet, but I do want more people kind of checking it out so I can find out feedback and errors, etc., before it's pushed out to a larger viewer base. So this is WoW Mount Guides, and what this is basically is a place for you to find your next mount a little bit easier. As I said, it's not finished, and I do want to have armory integration by the end of the year, but right now I'm working on getting all of the mounts up. There's currently about 500 mounts on the website, we've got about 100 left to add, and I'm hoping to have those there by the end of the month. But basically you can use the different tags and search options to find the mounts that you're looking for a little bit easier, and every mount you click on should have a visual, a 3D model, and also a guide, and in some cases the video guide as well, for you to find out how to get that mount a little bit easier too. So definitely check it out, let me know what you think of it, and yeah, outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon, hopefully this video was kind of interesting to you. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.